possession stroke exorcism subgenre is alive and well, so to speak, in 21st century cinema. Here, I'll be taking a look at one of the more recent efforts to trouble our very souls. I'm Stephen Archibald, and welcome to my movie podcast. Hello, welcome to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews, The Nun Story, Pray For The Devil, 2022, William Friedkin's superb 1973 movie The Exorcist casts a large shadow, even to this day. So many movies about possession have been made during the decades which have passed since its release. Directed by Daniel Stamm, Pray for the Devil is yet another variation. The Roman Catholic Church finds it has to open several exorcism schools due to a huge rise in demonic possessions, calling for more priests to be trained in the rite of exorcism. The thing is, only male priests are allowed to carry out exorcisms. However, at one such school, Father Quinn, who's portrayed by Colin Salmon, notices the remarkable capabilities of a young nun. Sister Anne, who's played by Jacqueline Byers, seems to know how to put possessed individuals at ease. Anne soon ends up a trainee exorcist, much to the consternation of many of her male peers. Apart from Father Quinn, it's only fellow trainees, Father Dante and Father Raymond, who will provide her with spiritual support. But make no mistake, as the malevolent forces multiply and become more sinister, Sister Anne becomes increasingly resourceful and emboldened. Aside from having to deal with disturbing visions and unusual experiences, Anne is thrust into performing not one, but two exorcisms. One concerning Father Dante's sister, and the other a little girl named Natalie. This on Natalie's possession being all the more alarming for Anne, due to the fact that she believes her schizophrenic mother had been possessed by the same demon. The fine British actor Ben Cross played his last screen role in this picture. He portrays the rather stern Cardinal Matthews. Best remembered for playing the athlete Harold Abrahams in Chariots of Fire, his genre credits include The Unholy, in which he also played a man of the cloth, Paper House, Exorcist the Beginning, and the 2009 reboot of Star Trek. He also portrayed Barnabas Collins, in the early 1990s revival of the TV series Dark Shadows. Sadly, Ben Cross died of cancer on the 18th of August 2020, a mere 10 days after he had completed filming his scenes in this movie. He was 72 years old. Many critics didn't particularly take to pray for the devil, but I think it is very much worth seeing it brings plenty of fresh touches to a well-worn horror subgenre. How often do we get to see an intuitive female novice tackle demonic entities in a religious sphere dominated by men? The movie's special effects may be a little too slick for their own good, but they remain, well, good. And there's no denying that this is a very good-looking horror film. Laura Venkova's art direction and Jonathan McKinstry's production design are rather attractive. Not to mention the nicely lit cinematography 
provided by Dennis Crossan. And speaking as a lapsed Catholic, I've always had a thing for religious architecture and iconography. And this film is replete with both. The Canadian actress Jacqueline Byers gives a persuasive performance as Sister Anne, a young woman traumatised by her past, as well as due to harbouring a dark secret. Jacqueline had received much advice on how to depict a trauma victim from a Harvard-educated therapist. Ms. Byers appeared in the somewhat underrated science fiction miniseries Ascension in 2014, and she had a lead role in the disaster series Salvation, which ran for two series between 2017 and 2018. And there's one particular line her character says, which sums up her situation and the state of her mind. The demon targets the devout, because our guilt is deepest. Nathan Barr's film score is suitably hair-raising. He wrote music for such TV shows as True Blood, Hemlock Grove and Carnival Row. And his big screen credits include Hostel, Hostel Part 2 and The Last Exorcism. It was the German director of this movie Daniel Stamm, who directed The Last Exorcism in 2010. Stan also helmed an eerie 2014 film called Thirteen Sins, which co-stars a particularly shifty Ron Perlman. A newcomer to screen acting, Posey Taylor was just nine years old when she played the challenging part of Natalie. Taken under Jacqueline Byer's wing, and also carefully handled by the rest of the team, Posey made a great impression on this movie's director. Stan was won over by how she could both comprehend and act out her complicated scenes. And the scene in which Natalie is force-fed her own long hair by the demon is truly alarming. Colin Salmon, an actor blessed with a rich velvety voice, portrays Father Quinn. He made his auspicious debut opposite Helen Mirren in Prime Suspect 2 in 1992. Colin's movie genre appearances include Resident Evil, Resident Evil Retribution, Alien vs Predator and Exam. He is also known for playing MI6's Deputy Chief of Staff Charles Robinson in The Bomb Flicks, Tomorrow Never Dies, The world is not enough, and die another day. Salmon had lead roles in the TV series Hex and Krypton. During the creepy exorcism scene featuring Father Dante's sister, I was happy to see that an air fan featured heavily. As I mentioned in my Angel Heart podcast, air fans can serve as truly sinister looking objects and can be treated as poor tents of doom. Christian Navarro, who plays Father Dante, made his breakthrough in the Netflix teen drama series, 13 Reasons Why. And the Scottish actor, Nicholas Ralph, who portrays Father Raymond, is best known in the UK for playing James Harriet in the Channel 5 reboot of All Creatures Great and Small. And it was very pleasing to see Virginia Madsen, star of such movies as Electric Dreams, The Hotspot, The Dead Can't Lie, and the 1992 version of Candyman, appear in this movie as the sympathetic Dr. Peters. She is, of course, the younger sister of Michael Madsen. Originally known as The Devil's Light and The Devil's Flame, this movie's screenplay was written by Robert Zapier, a man who co-scripted Halloween H20 from 1998 and worked 
on the 2004 sci-fi miniseries Five Days to Midnight, which starred Timothy Hutton, Zapier's screenplay even made the blood list of 2018. Pray for the Devil was filmed in Sofia in Bulgaria and was shot there during the summer of 2020. Released on the 28th of October 2022, it was distributed by Lionsgate. And even though it sometimes seems like a greatest hits compilation of other exorcism movies, Pray for the Devil remains wildly entertaining. I'm Stephen Archibald, and thank you for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. Look after yourself, and bye-bye for now.